Howdy all, it's Ms. Kosh. Um, I am assuming that you have seen rational functions to some extent, and I want to talk about the whys behind it. Okay, so in the past, you may have had a chart that would kind of talk you through like the, the different things you needed to have memorized, like this is how you do these sorts of things. Um, and we do want to talk about that, and we do, we, we do want to know um, those different pieces, and there, there might be something that you need to memorize. But my goal in this video and in this, the way that I'm teaching through this right now is so that you understand the why behind it. Okay, so here goes nothing. Um, to begin with, they're asking us to sketch um, the parent function, which is 1 over x, and it's going to look something like this. Okay, it's going to have asymptotes at y equals 0 and an asymptote at x equals 0. Make sure when you're writing an asymptote that you always tell me what it equals because if you just said the asymptote's at 0, I don't know what you're talking about. Okay, um, so and then the next one, what we're going to do is we're going to compare the parent function to the tran with we're going to consider the parent function with the transformations. So you'll notice that down here it's going to, that minus 4 is going to tell me I'm going to, it's going to, um, well, let's start up here, sorry. We have a, a vertical stretch of 2. And then we are going to shift to the right 4. And then this right here tells me that we're going to go up 3. Okay, so I don't need to keep all those. Anyway, there we go. So what I have done is my asymptotes, what used to be at y equals 0, now went up 3, and it's 1, 2, 3. So now I have an asymptote here. And what used to be at x equals 0 now has gone over 1, 2, 3, 4 to the right. And then things got stretched by a factor of 2. So what I might do, depending on how... Um, how precise I need you to be. Typically, um, we'll be precise with our x-intercepts, our y-intercepts, and any holes that we might have. We'll talk about that later. Um, but I'm not overly concerned about points. But just to, to illustrate this, what I would do is I would go on either side of my, um, my vertical asymptote and say, okay, so what happens when I plug in 3? Um, g of 3 would be equal to 2 over 3 minus 4 plus 3 which is equal to negative 2 plus 3, which is equal to positive 1. So at, I'm at the point 3, 1, which is right here somewhere. And then I'm going to do the same thing on the other side of the asymptote, say, say 5. Um, and so I have 2 over 5 minus 4 plus 3. That's a positive 1. So that's 2 plus 3 is equal to 5. So I'm at the point 5. This was 3, 4, 5. So it's somewhere up here. And so that kind of tells me how things got stretched from there. And anyway, we're, we're looking something like that. Okay, so, but this is not typically how we give you the problem. What we typically do is you'll see it more in this form right here, where it's something ax plus b over cx plus d, where there, there's all these different numbers. So let's see how, let's take this one and we'll come to here so that in the future you understand what's happening with that one. That's, that's the whole point of this. So in order to make it all one fraction, I need to give this second part a common denominator. So I have 2 over x minus 4 plus, well, 3 over 1 gets multiplied by at the denominator of x minus 4. And so if I want that new denominator, I've got to do it to the numerator too because I can multiply by 1. Um, so this is my y equals, or you know what, let's stay consistent g of x equals. All right, so now I have 2 plus 3 times x minus 4 all has the common denominator of x minus 4. So my g of x is going to be equal to, I see a 3x, I see minus 12 plus 2 becomes a minus 10 over x minus 4. Okay, and so what I see from this is I see, well, we knew from before that we had a um, a horizontal asymptote of 3 because we went up 3. Well, notice if I take this 3 and divide it by that understood 1 right there, that gave me that same value. So what we had learned in the past was that um, when we have... The, the thing that they would have taught you in Algebra 2 is that if you have the same degree, your horizontal asymptote comes from dividing the leading coefficients. So down here, horizontal... Okay, we, there's two things that can happen. One of them is it's y equals 0, and we'll talk about that in a second. The other one is we y equals, and you divide 
deleting, I'm going to run out of space, coefficients. And that happens, coefficients, that happens when it's the same degree. I, I went to write degree, and I wanted to write same, sorry. Same degree. Okay, um, so on this one, they were the same degree, and when you divide those leading coefficients, and that showed you how much you shifted up. So that's everything I've got in uh, yellow. So what we also notice is in this one, you can't really tell with all these negatives, you're not really sure if it had a vertical stretch or not. And, and if it's given to you in this form, determining if there's a stretch is kind of hard to do. So, but when we, we could divide this out, if we wanted to, we could say 3 minus 10 and do synthetic division. Um, 3 times 4 is 12. This, that's my remainder. This becomes 2. And so sure enough, this is 3 plus 2 over x minus 4. Notice what we had a second ago. That's what we get when we divide. That exactly matches um, this, matches this beautifully. Okay, we are getting cluttered. I'm going to see what I can do to fix that. Um, actually, I don't know that I need the rest of that. Um, okay, another connection that I see is I see that my asymptote here, this one was at x equals um, x equals 4, became, um, came from my domain. And so keep in mind, you're not Chuck Norris. You can't divide by 0. So my, my domain has the restriction where x cannot equal 4. And in this particular case, what happens there is um, that vertical asymptote well, there was no hole. There was no way that that canceled with the top and the bottom. We'll talk about that in a minute. Um, but that became my vertical asymptote. And so what we'll say down here is when we look at our vertical asymptote, this is when, um, so I'm going to say step one, look for holes. And then step two is set the denominator equal to zero. And those would be, and you can have, you can have multiple vertical asymptotes. Um, so the only time when we look for holes, um, we could have something, uh, basically a hole happens when I have like an x minus 1 on the top that cancels with an x minus 1 on the bottom. Okay, this, when I, when I start canceling things out, I'm left, this would be equal to 1 over x plus 2. Um, it, so this graph right here looks just like this graph, except there's a hole, well, when x was equal to 1, okay? And then when I plug in 1, I get the, I get the y value, so 1 plus 2 down there is 3. So th this graph right here, um, well, you don't know what I'm talking about. This graph looks exactly to the graph of um, y equals 1 over x plus 2, except the, this one has a hole at that point. Okay. Well, there's the bell. Um, okay, so look for holes. Um, one other thing that I wanted to point out, you know what, I'm going to get rid of this. One other thing that I wanted to point out was that sometimes you could have a weird situation where I say I have an x minus 2 over um, an x minus 2 squared. Okay, so this will cancel, so one of them up here cancels, with, or that one up there cancels with one of them on the bottom. So in that case, what we end up getting is it looks like 1 over x minus 2. So we're saying, oh, we've got a hole where we also have an asymptote. No, the asymptote actually trumps. So this would just have an asymptote at x equals 2. Anyway, I'm getting a little ahead of myself. Um, so another thing that we might say when we come down here... Um, the hole is what we call removable discontinuity. Okay, that means it's discontinuous and it just removes itself. So it could look something like it could be a line that all of a sudden has a hole and then it keeps going. Or it could be another graph that's doing something like this, has a hole and then it approaches an asymptote, and over here it approaches an asymptote. So it removed itself at that place. Um, a hole will happen when um, uh, something cancels out. And then make the note, don't forget 
to find x and y. Okay, so x will come from what it canceled out, and then to find the y, you have to plug it back into what's already reduced. Okay, so like if I had an x plus 1 over an x plus 1 times an x plus 2, this is going to look like 1 over x plus 2. My whole is at negative 1. When I plug in negative 1 right here, um, I get 1 over 1, which is just 1. So in this particular case, that whole would be the point at negative 1, 0. So you'd have to, you'd have to do something. Um, it would look sort of similar to this, except I forgot to shift. Okay. Um, let me come back and continue. Actually, what's next? Let me stop at this point because it's almost time for my lunch, and I will come back and make another video that continues on with all of this. So um, I will see you maybe immediately, but I'm going to go eat. Enjoy your day. Go practice. See you later.